Hey guys, this is Mr. Gloria. Um, we've got one more page to do on our notes, uh, getting faster positive acceleration notes. This would be page five. Well, so far we've discussed the acceleration, uh, a couple of equations, etc. And now we're kind of at the end of this sort of section on getting faster. Our next unit will be objects getting slower and we'll get to that uh, soon too. So basically we've really had uh, kind of two equations here, our how fast equation, and that's kind of right here, and that would be VF equals VI plus AT. This is our final velocity, this is our initial velocity, this is the acceleration, again that's just a number, and this is time. And then we have our how far equation. We can write that delta x equals vit plus one half at squared. All right, now some textbooks will write this x sub f equals, let me just kind of write it this way, one half at squared plus vit plus x sub i. Now, in a math course, in a math course, you would have maybe something like this, that y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And that's really the general term of a general mathematic equation of a parabola, right? And all of these terms kind of mash up with the coefficients we see in a general parabola. Okay, instead of using the variable x, we're using the variable t, and instead of using the variable y, we're using our final position. So some textbooks write it like this, some textbooks kind of write it like this, not a real big deal. So let's kind of start up at the top here. Let me get maybe a different color. So what exactly is acceleration? Acceleration really then is a number. It basically a number that says how is our velocity changing? We're changing velocity with respect to time. Acceleration then can be found as the slope, okay, the slope of a velocity time graph. Okay, so we have a slope here. This slope here is the acceleration. Now our velocity is changing with respect to time. Now, what we get then with the position time graph, then we get a parabola. This would be a top opening parabola. This is for an object again getting faster. Now, how does that compare with an object staying at one speed? Well, our VT graph is a horizontal line and our position time graph is a diagonal. So this, these two graphs here represent constant velocity. All right, now units then, in the metric system we then have a velocity unit divided by a time unit. Okay, there's our velocity unit and there's our time unit. Some textbooks will say, well, this is really meters per second squared, and that's equivalent, all right? Now, when we're dealing with cars, et cetera, you know, we might talk about a mi mile per hour over seconds. So maybe you're saying that a car can change its velocity by 10 miles per hour every second. So you'd be, car would be driving maybe at 10 miles per hour, at 20, at 30, at 40, and it's changing every second. You might see this term here, this phrase, rate of a rate. Acceleration really is a rate of a rate, right? Because what we have is a velocity, which is a rate, that's a rate that something moves, okay, or a displacement. And so the rate of velocity then would be acceleration, a rate of a rate, okay? Velocity is a rate, and then acceleration is the rate of that rate, all right? Now, your body's pretty good at feeling acceleration. We have accelerometers kind of built into our bodies. They're kind of in our middle ear, 
And so we have these accelerometers. We can really tell when something's getting faster or when our car's getting slower. Okay? We don't really have we don't really have this equivalent of a velocitometer built into ourselves, but we do have accelerometers. So basically there we've got uh, one on our left ear, I mean, one, yeah, one on our left ear and one on our right ear. So these are in our inner ear. They can, they basically can detect accelerations going up or down or forward, back, left and right. All right. Well, we talked a little bit about these, you know, we've talked a little bit about these um, equations. Let's see maybe how we might use those equations. So let's maybe you know, maybe our acceleration is five meters per second per second. Okay, and, and the car has an initial velocity of maybe, oh, I don't know, five meters per second. Okay, we could say, well, how fast, how fast is the car going after six seconds? Well, we can say, well, the initial velocity is five meters per second plus the acceleration is five meters per second per second. We can put six seconds in there. We multiply these terms, these two numbers, we multiply. The seconds cancel. We're left with 30 meters per second. We then add in this, so we get 35 meters per second. A velocity idea, that's the final velocity after six seconds, okay? How far would that car have gone? Well. Again, we can do the same idea here. Let's just look at this idea here, this phrase, VI, that'd be five meters per second, time is six, plus one half A, well our A is five meters per second per second, and then we have to square the time. Don't forget about squaring the time, kids, okay? It's an important idea, okay? So five times 30, that's 60. Seconds cancel, there's our meters plus we have one half times five times the square of six, that's 36. Okay, I may need a calculator, I don't have one in front of me, so let's just say 36, half of 36 is 18, half of 36 is 18, take it times five, we get 90. Add 90 plus 30, we get, what, 120 meters. So that car has gone down the road 120 meters. It has reached a speed then of six seconds. We'll be doing more practice of these equations um, later. Well, that really ends these, this section of notes getting faster, all right? If you have any questions, make sure you ask, okay? We'll talk to you later, kids. Bye.